Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Now Decadence. Welcome to my channel, welcome one and all returning subscribers, new subscribers, lurkers who don't subscribe. You're all still very welcome but if you are a lurker, why, why, why are you lurking? Just click that subscribe button, you know you want to, just click it, click it. <laughs> Ignore me, I'm in one of my funky moods today. Anywho, so I'm going to show you the products that I'll be using in this video. That box of foils is from SBD London. She does, Louise being the she, uh, Louise does loads of different boxes of foils and they're really cool. This glitter mix is a random one that I got quite some time ago and I can't actually remember where I got it from it's got no label on it so yeah don't know no idea sorry about that it's a really nice mix as well this brush I got from Aliexpress I wanted to give it a go you no know, I'm like with brushes I like brushes I'm a bit of a brush hoarder anywho I've put the link to that brush in the description box below for anyone who is interested in getting it. It's not an affiliate link or anything. It's just literally where I bought it from. And yeah, any, anyway, because people tend to ask, where, where did you get that from? So there you go. Hand dolly. I'm using my lovely hand dolly. If you're after a realistic silicone plastic, plastic, that's not what I meant. Practice. Put your teeth in, Karen. Yeah, if you're after a silicone practice hand, a realistic one that has the slide in tips so that you don't have to worry about soaking off and using nail guards, then here you go, hand dolly. She's wonderful. I love her. I use her all the time, as you see in my videos. I actually purchased two with my very own pennies before I became an affiliate for them. So it's a product I really believe in. I will never recommend products that I wouldn't personally use or spend my money on. So rest assured, she is wonderful. And as you know, I use her all the time. So if you're interested, head over to www.handolly.co.uk and grab yourself a bargain. If you use my code KFGIFT, you will get a discount on your order. Okie dokie, now that all that is out of the way, let's get on with the set. So as you saw, I had already applied the tips and done my nail prep before pressing record and you saw me apply the thin clear base layer to the nails I always do that for a myriad of reasons um, top reasons are it clear acrylic has the best adhesion properties to it because it has nothing else added to it it is the most likely to stay put on the nails without lifting um, there is also the added bonus of when you file back you know that you're not going to hit your natural nail if you file back to just that clear layer i also do that for the reason being even though this is not a real person i still do it because it's a part of my routine because when i do my own nails i'll file back to that clear layer i don't actually remove the clear layer unless it's lifted or discolored in some way or there is a reason to remove it you know like i said for any kind of greenies or anything not that i've ever i don't actually ever had any greenies but um yeah i other than that i keep my thin clear base on because that means that i'm not prepping my nail every two weeks over and over when you think about it nails are not exactly thick they're very thin and if you are prepping that nail every two weeks constantly over and over by the time where it grows from the matrix to the free edge it's going to be quite thin because you've removed that shine and prepped it so many times therefore i leave the thin clear base on so that when i'm prepping my nail i'm literally only prepping the regrowth area and not the entire nail over and over again and then of course there are other reasons to use the thin clear base it stops staining and is a little it adds just a smidge of strength as well but anyway enough waffling on about the clear base i highly recommend doing a thin clear base it's just worth doing and it doesn't add much time to your service at all just just do it trust me 
just just do it makes all the difference so whilst i've been rambling as usual i have applied white acrylic to the nails so i did a full nail of the white on the index finger and then i did some three quarters of the way of the white on these nails you'll see why when we get to that part um so on the tip of this now I'm adding that glitter mix now I'm picking that glitter mix up with small beads of a clear acrylic and then using that to adhere the glitter on I don't pre-mix my glitters waste of time just use your brush with a bead of a wet bead of clear acrylic and apply it that way and then your glitter is always there to be used for whatever uh, method you want to use it with and you can use it in gel and all sorts so yeah don't bother pre-mixing your glitters it's just you'll have a you'll you'll use so much acrylic powder to do that if you do that with the amount of glitters that people normally have in their stash so just um yeah pick it up with your brush saves a lot of hassle so on the little finger, I'm also going to be adding some of that glitter, again picking it up with a wet bead of clear acrylic so that I can nudge the pieces around where I want them to be. As you can see, it's a chunky mix. It's got some hearts in it, some butterflies and some hexagons, and it's really packed. As you can see, I'm, I'm rifling through it because I wanted to pick out a couple of uh, butterflies out of the mix and strategically place them but also add some more so where i'm adding more there you can see i've not added any more clear acrylic at that point i was just using my damp brush but then i did i wanted to pick up a bit more glitter so then i dipped into my monomer into my clear powder got a nice wet bead and then into the glitter which picks up the glitters and then apply it to the nail let those set up so that when i cap and do all the good other stuff that the glitter pieces don't move so i'm going to use this foil i really wanted to give it a go i thought it was quite interesting with the floral and uh, animal print it yeah i thought it was pretty cool so i'm going to use that one i use the spd london foil gel I love this stuff it works really well so I apply a nice even layer of that on cure that for 60 seconds and when it comes out of the lamp it's going to look yellow can you see that don't panic it doesn't stay yellow as it cools down it will go clear and you'll see at the end my nails are not they're not yellow at all it's just um, it's just how it comes out of the lamp when it's warm it comes out yellow but it gives you I quite like that because it shows you exactly where you've placed the um, foil gel say if you are on you know just doing a stripe of foil gel you would actually be able to see it a bit better especially on a white surface where you've placed the gel when it comes out of the lamp so yeah don't worry about it it doesn't stay yellow it will turn clear again as it cools down and you'll see by the end of the set you know it's all going back to white you won't notice it's there at all so i will apply that foil and i will use a silicone tool to press it down and you'll see me lift it up quite often to try and get the foil folds out obviously with um nails being curved the when you apply the foil it can get creases in it so if you just lift it up and and flatten out those creases so that you don't get any missing bits and yeah as you can see you can get a full nail of foils with that foil gel that's why I love it but do do it straight as it comes out of the lamp don't let it cool down before you apply your foil it just sticks better that way and back to that middle finger so now I'm doing a reverse French extended nail bed and I wanted to give this method a go now I Mm, I wasn't that keen on this method I will say the method of doing the French over the um, the extended nail bed over your French area that's already been done I thought I'd give it a go because I know it's another technique but after I'd done it I didn't quite like it and this rose glow uh, 
cover pink is really nice it's a really nice cover pink however it had shadowing so badly so every bead that i applied when i went to file this in and you'll see later on it has shadowing that shows where each new bead was applied so i didn't like that it's so essentially it's marbled but you don't notice it when you're applying it that it's marbled but when you file into it you notice that it's marbled so yeah i wasn't happy with this cover pink so i would say if you're going to use rose glow you would have to do it in one bead to avoid the um marbling and the shadowing it gives I'm not happy with that it really peed me off to say the least anywho so I'll let that set up before I file it and I don't know if you noticed but I did apply a little bit of clear over the glitters which will protect them when I go to file in the uh, small line that way I won't file into them because you press against the wall not down onto the nail but just in case I put a bit of clear acrylic on so that none of the glitters got scratched if that makes sense and then on the little finger I'm just ombreing ombreing oh, ombreing <laughs> I'm just ombreing the cover pink rose glow over the glitters and then I'm going to cap it at the same time which is building my strength and structure obviously with the cover pink you can build your structure with it but I like to cap everything anyway but because there's an ombre you would need to definitely cap where the ombre is and the glitters to protect it but you could essentially build your apex with the rose pink should you so wish but yeah if you're new to my channel, I cap everything. I like to cap everything. It's just the way I am. I like that glass effect that it gives over the top of colours. With the foils, I recommend not going straight over with the acrylic like I did. As you will see, as you've probably noticed, the foil, uh, the colours of the foil have sort of run a bit where I've brushed over it with my brush. To avoid that happening, I suggest encapsulating the foil with your base coat first, cure that in place, and then apply the acrylic. That way your colors don't run. Can you see on the ring finger where my brush has brushed the um, foil and it's sort of run near the tip, the colors merged and swiped kind of thing smudged that's the word I was looking for the color is smudged so to avoid that happening definitely encapsulate with a base coat first before you then use your acrylic on it that way you won't smudge the foil design so after I've kept that index finger I'm doing another reverse French on the ring finger so it's the same method and like I said unfortunately it was setting up so fast I was, I was struggling with it a bit actually um i think this sets up faster than uh the natural beige does <clears throat> excuse me but yeah with rose glow and the marbling and the shadowing it has to be done in one bead if it can't be done in one bead it doesn't look very good maybe you could get away with doing two beads but where i'm a a, a many bead kind of girl yeah it this doesn't this didn't work out well for me at all i think i might have to play with the rose glow a bit more and see if i can get it to not shadow and marble the way it did it's not a color that i often use because it is a very pale pink so it's not a color that i often use especially with me having tans naturally tanned skin it's a bit too pale to be a cover pink for me so it's not one I've used very often yeah I mean it's a really pretty pink but it's just a shame the way it behaved I wasn't happy with it at all so I let those reverse uh, French nail bed air extended nail beds I let them set up and harden you'll know when it's hard when you get a that kind of sound if you get a dull thud it's not ready so I'm going to file those in and to save my arms I'm going to use my um, e-file to do the bulk of it because it was quite untidy I didn't do a, gob 
a good gob. Oh, wow, I really can't speak today. <laughs> gob. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Anyway, I didn't do a good job because I just, I clearly put good and job together and got gob. But anyway, I didn't do a good enough job of um, shaping with my brush. So it was quite an untidy extended nail bed so it needed a little bit more effort to bring it back into shape and to save my poor fingers because they were hurting um i will use my e-file to just help me along now you'll see i'm not pushing down on to the base of the nail i'm only pushing against the wall if you push down onto the nail itself you will file into the design and you'll lose the design so you don't want to do that so just push against the wall not down onto your nail because like i said you'll ruin your design and then you'll have to put something else there to uh, compensate for it so do pay attention to what you're doing i mean you should never push whenever you're filing an nail bedded when whether you're using a hand file or the e-file you should never push down on the nail anyway because you can dig into a person's natural nail bed and you don't want to do that you don't not at all so push against the wall not down on the nail plate i know it sounds weird and it sounds like you can't do that but you will when you try it you will feel it in when you're pushing your nail file against the wall and not down on the nail you'll know what exactly what i mean give it a go and you'll see what i mean it makes total sense when you're doing it it's just explaining in words is quite uh, difficult when you're not actually feeling what I'm telling you. So give it a go and you'll see exactly what I mean. It will make complete sense, I promise. So I'll just check those nail beds against each other to make sure they are a similar uh, width and length and make any adjustments that I need to. And then when I'm happy with that, I will remove the dust and then I can carry on and encapsulate the free edge. So brush off the dust. There we go. Happy days. So I'll just use my acrylic brush to dampen down the nail. Do make sure you wipe your brush on your kitchen roll before you go into your monomer because any dust that your brush picks up from that nail will then be deposited on your kitchen roll and not into your monomer. So definitely dampen down the nail, it makes it easier for the acrylic to slide and adhere nicely without any dry patches of crystallized crystallized powder or obviously dust which we, we don't want and then you can encapsulate away so of course strength and structure are paramount for a set of nails to survive the wearing of you know two to three weeks that a person has them on structure is everything um, your nails don't have to be super thick for them to be strong the placement of your apex determines how strong your nail is and always remember that the free edge should be no thicker than a credit card. You don't need a doorstop on the end of your fingers and it makes life awkward with picking things up etc. So yeah, try and keep your free edge nice and thin, no thicker than a credit card and you should be good to go. Put your apex in the back third. The apex on these nails is slightly different to nails that come straight out from the side walls. Because these are curved, the apex is, is brought down a bit further. So it's not quite in the back third. It's more in the middle, if that makes sense. Because of the way the nails curve, you have to compensate for that because it's just different to nails that grow straight out i haven't left the filing in this one if you want to see how to file curved nails look through my back catalog and you'll see that i've done other nails that are curved and shown the filing in that so yeah if you're interested do check out my other videos i've got loads of videos on my channel but i definitely have quite a few that have curved nails in them and i've left the filing in quite a few of those so yeah head on over to my uh, channel and have a look for those. 
if you would like to know how I file curved nails because the it is slightly different to how I file straight nails so once I've finished capping that I will take a last look at all the nails together to make sure that they are all a similar thickness because I want my set to be uniform and to have continuity so each nail isn't an individual it's part of a set that's how we get a uniform set so this nail was being a pain in the backside and I wasn't picking up big enough beads to fill in that area that I was trying to fill so I had to keep adding and adding and adding but yeah I'm just making sure that that area is the same as it is on all the other nails because I don't want one to look really thin and the others to look fat if that makes sense so do pay attention look at all the nails together make sure they all match and that is it yeah so i filed and shaped off camera if you want like i said to know how i file them check out my other videos so i will remove the dust and now i'm going to show you what i mean by if you don't do the rose glow in a one bead you get this and that is so frustrating like oh, growly growly so I didn't want to just leave the nails like that because that's really annoying and you would never send a client out the door like that I well I wouldn't send a client out the door like that so here is my remedy I get a similar color in a gel polish and we will gel polish over that extended nail bed and hide all of that um, shadowing that you can see which makes the nail look so untidy but we can cover it up now you guys know well my frosty fam know I leave mistakes in my videos because this is how you learn you learn from your mistakes and if I'm showing you how to remedy an issue I know that you guys when you come across these things you're not going to panic you're going to know exactly how to deal with it and I know that your clients are going to be going out of the door happy because you are able to rectify any issues that you may come across I think it's really important to show that things do not always go according to plan and there are things that that go wrong and i want you to go i want you guys to be able to know that it can be there's always a way to rectify an issue and just don't panic just take a deep breath and have a think there is always a solution to a problem and this is my solution so you saw I just flash cured it a little bit in place because I was concerned that I would smudge it because I'm quite clumsy um, but as I was doing it I realized that yeah I wasn't going to smudge it so much so I, I didn't bother flash curing it again on the next round so I'm applying that nice and neatly with a detailer brush or a liner brush around the smile line first then I will use the brush from the bottle to apply the gel polish you want to apply it in a nice thin layer it's better to do it in layers than a thick layer keep it thin always because you've got more chance of it curing properly and less chance of it wrinkling or not curing thoroughly which is what you don't want so do it in th in thin layers take your time don't stress don't panic just do it in two thin layers even three if it's necessary depending on what gel polish you're using just take your time thin layers and it'll all be fine in the end you'll see you won't even be able to notice so because I want to make sure that I don't um, make a mess because I've got shaky hands and I didn't want to just use the brush from the bottle and risk um, going over the lines as it were so that's why I'm still using my liner brush to go around the outline of the small line first and then again I will use the brush from the bottle to fill by the cuticle area and the rest of that extended nail bed keep it nice and neat by that cuticle area if you find that you can't get your brush um, close without touching 
use your liner brush around that cuticle area too it's not a problem you know, you've got these tools for a reason so make use of them use them to your advantage that's what they are there for they're, th they're there to make life easier for you where possible so I will just finish applying the gel polish to this nail bed make sure it's nice and evenly distributed I don't want it um, to be lumpy so we want to make sure that that polish is nice and even and as I've got the rose glow on the little finger I didn't want that to look like a different cover pink even though I've picked one that's very very close to rose glow it would be obviously different compared to the two middle fingers so I wanted to make sure that that got blended in as well so what I'm doing is applying it to the cuticle area down halfway down the nail then I'm using some rubber base coat at the tip of the nail and then I'm going to use this ombre brush and by using the rubber base coat it will help me to ombre that um, peach pink color down into a fade over the glitter if I didn't add the rubber base on it would have been harder for me to try and blend that cover pink in you know into nothing essentially so that's just a little trick for you if you use a rubber base I suggest using a rubber base or a, just a normal base coat as opposed to a top coat to do this because then your top coat's got something to stick to it'll have a tacky layer so use it doesn't have to be the rubber base but it, any base coat will do and then yeah like I said just ombre that into the base coat and it will just make your life so much easier with your fade it's it don't don't make life hard for yourself don't try and fade into nothing without actually putting nothing there because your clear is essentially your nothing if you if I'm making sense so that just makes life easier wipe your brush off after you've done swipes you'll see I, the brush goes off camera that's where I'm wiping the um, brush off because I want a nice even fade I want it to be a seamless ombre and um, seamless ombres take work so I'm taking my time with it and I'm making sure that it's done nicely and to my satisfaction because I am nitpicky and quite fussy so I won't stop until I know that it is the way I would like it to be add it just a tiny bit more pink nice and thin still not too thick because obviously where I'm ombreing it and wiping my brush off I am wiping some of the pink away so that's why I added some more on and when I'm happy with that I will cure all the nails for 60 seconds each layer that I did I cured for 60 seconds so on the first coat of the two middle fingers I did 60 seconds and um, this is the second coat on as well of the little finger so that will get 60 seconds basically first coat 60 seconds second coat 60 seconds that way i know that they are thoroughly cured and now it's time to bling it baby let's get some crystals out yes yes crystals so for bigger pieces that have pointy backs and stuff i will use the tony lee jewelry gel because it is very very thick so it gives the larger pieces something to sink into and for the flat backs i use the spd london diamond gel and i love this it's wonderful that little pen it's got a nib it's got a brush and it holds crystals really well really well i love that stuff for putting crystals on you see me use it all the time highly recommend the SPD London Diamond Gel and the Tony Lee Gel. The only thing to remember with the Tony Lee Gel though is that it is not tack free. The SPD London Diamond Gel is. It doesn't have a tacky layer but the Tony, uh, Tony Lee Jewelry Gel from Miss You that does have a tacky layer so if that's a concern for you I would suggest applying it then top coating over it and then applying your crystals into that so that, that you don't have a tacky glare um, I've not done that because I'm using the SPD London one around it and I know that that is uh, that doesn't have a tacky layer 
so I'm not that that concerned about it but yeah if you're worried about having that tacky layer there you will need to top coat over the jewelry gel from uh, Tony Lee bit of fluff always a bit of fluff absolutely drives me nutty where it comes from I don't know but a bit of fluff always seems to appear in my videos always wants a cameo cheek the cheek the nerve <laughs> oh dear we are very close to the end of the video after I have finished applying the crystals I will be top coating of course we want to top it off and keep it tough as usual but before we get to that point I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel I can't believe we have reached the 2k I know I said it a few videos back but um, yeah I'm super excited thank you everybody for subscribing I am honored that you decided to stick with me and join the frosty fam so thank you ever so much I really appreciate it my little channel is growing and it's lovely that you know more people are commenting and I'm getting to know some more of my frosty fam I love talking to you guys it's awesome fabulous I have the best subscribers ever and the support you guys give me I can't thank you enough it's what keeps me going there are days when I just feel like packing it all in and you guys keep me going because your comments make it all worth it to know that I'm helping um, make nails accessible to people who want to learn but can't actually afford to go to school for it I'm happy to help of course if you're going to be working on you know real people not just a practice hand and you want paying customers you will have to get qualified at some point but at least um, I know that I can help you get started so when you do have the money to go to uh, school and study for nails properly you'll have a lot of knowledge ready there and it will just make your studying so much easier so I hope to continue helping and continue to inspire newbie nail techs out there because it's a wonderful and really enjoyable profession when you your client leaves and you can see that they are feeling themselves with those nails because those nails make a difference to how a person can feel it gives them confidence when you've got a client that leaves and they are confident and they are happy it's just the best feeling in the world so I'm happy to know that I'm contributing to that in some small way because I can't have clients anymore and I do miss it I do miss it terribly but I know you guys when you get qualified or those that are newly qualified I know that you guys needed a little bit more help as well because you don't earn an awful lot some don't learn an awful lot sometimes with the nail courses so yeah I'm happy to help but as we are here to top it off and keep it tough that's how you know we're out at the end of the video so I'd like to say thank you ever so much again if you have not already joined the frosty fam go ahead and click that subscribe button we would love to have you it, they're a lovely bunch like I said um, if you've enjoyed this video in any way shape or form or it has helped you in some way please go ahead and click that like button it just gives me a little bit of feedback but it's also a you know it's how you can help me out for helping you out if that makes sense and if you're feeling up to it you are more than welcome to leave me a comment because I am absolutely happy to talk to you so that is all I have for this video this time peeps there is some footage and photos at the end for you to take a look-see at the final result. Result? <laughs> result. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm thinking about risotto. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I've got for this time, peeps. You take care now, and I will speak to you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Okay, just ever so quickly. Top coat around the crystals, not over them. If you top coat over them, you will lose the shine of the facets. So always go around them, but the top coat up against them, but not over them. Okay, I'm really gone now. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Love you. <laughs>